What is up witches and wizards, muggles and nomads, I'm Animagus and today I want to talk to you about not necessarily the changes that have come to ends, but actually how to identify them now and why that actually matters finally when it comes to these brand new skill trees. So recently with the new skill trees there have been just, we're just inundated with so much new information to take in and there's so much reading to do and there's so many details that it's very easy to get confused or to get lost or to get distracted by one particular skill that you really want to chase after or how we can get to that as fast as possible and so by upgrading certain things in the preceding nodes that can actually help us unlock the thing that we're trying to go after so the reason that this is important when it comes to ends is there are certain skills as you can see on the screen now that only affect tea shops or that only affect restaurants and then there are some that only affect pubs but then there are also some that just affect ends in general. So the umbrella term for a point of interest that helps you refill your spell energy primarily by way of meals, if you'll think of it that way, or snacking or whatever you want to call it, are called ends. So every, every one of those are an end. Now there are five specifically, and as you can see on the screen, thanks to Orange Wizard, they made a graphic here that you can check out. There are five. There are brown, purple, green, blue, and pink, and that is pubs, restaurants, bed and breakfasts, cafes, and tea shops. Now the reason that I want to raise some level of awareness, I just dropped my phone, the reason that I want to raise some level of awareness to this is because, again, like I said, there are certain skills that will help you collect better gifts or better energy from inns overall. That means anytime you go to any of those locations, you can pick up more energy or you can pick up rarer gifts or you can pick up more XP or whatever the thing is that, you know, that skill says. But then again, there are also certain skills that only allow you to get better things at pubs or better things at restaurants or better things specifically at tea shops. So before you spend those books, before you spend the rare currencies on any of those upgrades, do a little bit more reading than usual. If it seems like it's an overall upgrade for an inn or a point of interest that's around you, for example, right now I'm sitting in the Botanical Gardens and there are tons of pubs and there are tons of restaurants around me. So if I come play here often, that could be an upgrade that is worth it to me. But if I don't have a lot of pubs or restaurants and say I've only got a lot of cafes or say I've only got a lot of bed and breakfasts around me in the areas that I play, then that may not be a skill really worth upgrading until way, way, way down the road. So I, I say that not just about ends, but it's really important to understand this, especially with the skill tree, because there are so many shiny new things to chase. There's so many more skills now that are in the game than have ever been in the game before. And all of those skills have value to some degree. What I want to talk about is the game theory of how it matters more to you than it does to someone else. Because someone else may say, you have to have this skill. You have to get this upgrade. It's amazing. Every time I go out and play, I get super rare gifts from pubs. Or every time I go out, I get extremely rare drops from restaurants. And like, I see this all the time. And you may think, wow, I have to chase that skill. Or I have to get that skill. Only to realize later, man, I'm not getting any of these rare gifts. I'm not getting any of those drops. Why are they getting drops that I'm not? And you may realize that it's because the <laughs> nomenclature of these points of interest really hasn't mattered until this update. I just called everything an N, a green N, a blue N, a pink N. I never took the time to learn exactly what they are or exactly what the words mean surrounding them. So I say all of that, and this is a very short video, but I say all of that to let you guys know that when you are investing in skills, just because it's right for one person doesn't mean that it's going to be right for you. If you don't have those points of interest, or maybe you don't even have those types of spawns, and they're talking about departure denial for Hogwarts school foundables, and you rarely see those unless you go to a landmark, which are of course disabled because of COVID, but what I'm getting at is right now in the game, there isn't a definitive way to play, and that's so beautiful. You can choose your own path, you can forge your own way through your SOS training, and you don't have to wait to see what someone else says or what someone else is going to do. You get to play the way that you want to. If you want to level up faster, focus on Barufio's Brain Elixir, Brew Time Boost or Brew Time Reduction, Potion Effects Boost. That sounds amazing if that's something you're interested in. Are you having trouble against a specific family of foundables? Departure Denial, Mastery, those are going to be the things that you can go after. And the cool thing about that is, again, 
you get to decide the way that you play. So I wanted to raise the awareness of that. And again, the graphic from Orange Wizard talking about the points of interest, learning the names of those things, it will be, will, will be important down the road, especially as you're upgrading your skill tree. Now granted, there will be some times that you have to go through a node that you don't necessarily want to to get the skill that you will really, really want to get, and that's just part of the game design. That's just a part of the way things work, and that's just how it goes. There isn't any malicious intent behind that, but they can't just give you all of the really, really good skills without having to get a few of the things along the way that you, know, you have to pick up and upgrade there. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, let me know down in the comment section below if you knew that these POIs had different names before this update, if you ever noticed that at all. I mean, I knew that I noticed like the difference in color, but not really the difference in the stuff that they had. So again, let me know what you guys think down below, what types of skills you're upgrading. I'm interested to see as I start to theory craft skill trees and skills that specifically help certain uh, types of players and uh, start talking about those in videos. So if you haven't already, please hit the thumbs up down below as well as clicking that red subscribe button and turning on those bell notifications so you can be made aware the next time I produce a piece of Wizards Unite content. Thank you so much for watching this video. Go have a blast with SOS training and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.